Look at that monstrosity of a charger. Wow. What's up guys? We got this CCS adapter right here and we're gonna do a full charging curve analysis. This charger is super laggy, but we're gonna hit continue. Button doesn't even work. Did it stop again? For those of you wondering, yes, the battery was preconditioned. We routed the car to a local supercharger, which was about a mile away from this Electrify America charging station. Yes, this is a 350 kilowatt stall, even though the car can only really take up to 170 kilowatts. The battery was charged from 7% to 95% in 32 minutes and about 48 kilowatt hours of energy was delivered and it was actually pretty cheap almost 15 bucks because we paid the 31 cent per kilowatt hour rate which on peak at tesla would be 48 cents the one on the right is for a tesla supercharger the one on the left is for a ccs electrify america charger and now it's worth noting for those who aren't familiar with evs that typically batteries will the, the charging rate will taper off as the batteries get more full and so that's why we see a decline on both charts now my battery on the left was preconditioned I had routed it to a local supercharger to trick it to thinking I was going to test a supercharger when I wasn't so the battery was at temp and so when we look at some critical timestamps at 20% state of charge I was still pulling around 150 kilowatts now we look at this chart on the right it was pulling 150 kilowatts up until a little less than 20%, which is actually kind of interesting. As you may know, DC fast chargers are really just inverters, external inverters that convert AC to DC power and just will send as much power as it possibly can to the car. And it's the car's responsibility to determine how much power it wants to pull at a set time. So when we look at another critical timestamp, maybe when it hits 100, kilowatt, 100 kilowatts, it's probably around 40-ish, 45%. And I think the same could probably be said for this chart on the right, which makes sense. But now when we look over here at around 70% state of charge, the chart on the right is tapering off much faster. Now, I don't know if this is specific to a Tesla charger. I don't know if this is because this chart was pulled from a while ago and maybe there were updates to increase the charging speeds as the battery got more full but there's definitely discrepancies towards the end now we look at when it hits 50 kilowatts this happens at around 75 percent for the tesla supercharger but it actually happens at around 85 90 percent for the ea and that's actually really interesting to me i know lfp batteries typically do well up top and again these both of these charts are for LFP batteries. It, the one on the right reiterates that it's a made-in-China car, so it's possible this car was from the Chinese market. But at the end of the day, my car, which was an LFP car of the 2021 model year, has the same battery pack from China. That's where it came from. So comparing the two, it's actually really interesting. Very similar, but it actually improved a lot better, or, or better, I'm not going to say a lot better, on the EA charger, which is very promising for the CCS adapter. And so some critical timestamps down here, 7% to 50% 7 to in 10 minutes, incredible. 7% to 80% in 22 minutes, which even more insane. And this car, again, can be charged to 100% all day long, but we cut it off at 90% just because we had things to do. But 7% to 95% in 32 minutes is not bad at all. And we paid about $15 at a 31 cent per kilowatt hour rate, which makes the CCS adapter really appealing because here in SoCal, the Tesla supercharger has on rate and off rate peaks and, and, uh, sorry. Yeah. On peak rates is like 48 cents a kilowatt hour versus the EA, which is always 31 cents a kilowatt hour with the monthly subscription, which is about $4, but you make that back in a few charging sessions. No problem. So, that's the comparison that we have from the CCS to the Tesla supercharger. In theory, they should be identical. I don't believe the charger itself will modulate the speed. It's more of 
what the car determines what it wants. So again, there's other variables like the temperature outside, stuff like that. But for the most part, this EA charger is very promising. This adapter is super cool. I think it's going to cost maybe 250 bucks or so cheaper than the Chatamo adapter, which is again, very cool. And that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this charging analysis video for this LFP battery pack, please leave it down in the comments and give us some sort of feedback and possibly video ideas for the future. We have a Rivian R1T on order, so we can do a lot of charging related videos for that. But that's it, and see you guys in the next one.